I'm going to talk about some of the key players under, under our initiatives, under our oversight, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that we're actually doing today uh, along the lines of, of our previous speaker. And then I'm also going to have just a, a brief discussions of some of the messages and ideas that uh, we're thinking about, we're, some of our needs in Department of Defense as we move, uh, as we move forward on a very complex uh, uh, issue that we're all facing. Uh, first, and, and, and we're Department of Defense, uh, federal agency, we're, we're guided by, by statute, we're guided by uh, direction from, from the President, and, and specifically here, executive orders. And uh, I'm going to talk about just two very quickly. Executive Order 13514 is the Federal Leadership in Environment, Energy, and Economic Performance. And it sets out a number of important goals about uh, sustaining infrastructure and planning for the future and saving energy, et cetera, et cetera. But it has a couple of uh, key provisions. Uh, one key here that pertains to the subject matter today, and that requires all federal agencies to evaluate agency climate change risks and vulnerabilities. Executive 13514 came out in 2009 and began to say federal agencies need to start planning. Uh, in November of 2013, Executive Order 13653, called Preparing the U.S. for the Impacts of Climate Change, was issued by the, by the President, and it got much more specific about what is the direction that federal agencies need to take. We need to look at removing barriers, identifying opportunities to support climate-resilient infrastructure and investments. We need to report on progress. We need to develop plans. And finally, we need to inventory and assess required changes to, uh, to land water related policy programs, uh, infrastructures. For Department of Defense, we're thinking about national security and what this will mean for the nation. And every four years, uh, the Department of Defense, the National Security Council gets together and they do planning about the future based upon what we know and the changes we expect. The Quadrennial Defense Review sets long-term course and really rebalances Department of Defense's strategies, capability, and forces to, do, to address today's conflicts and tomorrow's threat. In 2010, uh, the uh, QDR recognized climate change will affect uh, Department of Defense in two broad ways. First, it said climate change will shape the operating environment, roles, and missions that the Department of Defense will undertake. It may have significant geopolitical impacts around the world, uh, resources like food and water. Climate change will also lead to increased demands for defense support to civilian authorities for humanitarian assistance. Also climate change, DOD will need to adjust to the impacts of climate change on its facilities, infrastructure, training, and testing activities and military capabilities. In 2014, the QDR, which was issued just in February, so it's uh, brand new, it is, it's gone a step further. It started to recognize climate change and lay out some specific steps that Department of Defense needs to do more moving forward. Now I'll let you read through those, but the, I highlight in red and in some of the following slides the assessments. How is it impacting ports? And it requires the 2014 QDR requires a complete, comprehensive assessment of all our installations across all the services uh, on what are, will be the impacts uh, of climate change on the availability of those resources as we move forward. Next, and another important driver for Department of Defense is what we call the De Department of Defense Climate Change Adaptation Roadmap. It's the plan. What are we going to do? It's required by the executive orders, and in 2012 and 13, Department of Defense issued its first uh, climate change roadmap. It's being updated uh, as we speak. We'll expect it out within the next, uh, probably within the next 60 days. But the draft goals and consistent with, uh, with the 2012, uh, clearly recognized Department of Defense needs to identify and assess climate impacts to our roles and operations and mission, integrate climate change considerations across the department. That issue, that's interesting because uh, a lot of us here are talking about what do we need to be doing. 
we want to know not only what we need to be doing, but we need to integrate it in how we do business. It needs to be part of our common understanding, our common planning, our common design, our common implementation. It needs to recognize that, that climate is changing, the oceans are changing, and therefore our business is changing. So we don't want it just a report and analysis that sits out there. It needs to be in, in incorporated into all of our uh, all of our day-to-day -day planning, our yearly, our biennial, our five-year planning that we're, uh, that we're doing. Let me talk about uh, quickly some of the key initiatives. And the first, uh, first initiative that I want to uh, talk about is, uh, is really about oversight. And it's oversight and management. How is Department of Defense managing, looking at, uh, uh, climate change. How are we dealing with these changes? Uh, first, the Department of Defense established what is called a Senior Sustainability Council. This is uh, required by Executive Order 13514, 13514, and it essentially takes the Assistant Secretaries of all the military departments, the Deputy Undersecretaries of Defense from all of the policy and program areas, and puts them on a decision body that is going to oversee the ultimate responsibility for implementing the changes and how we build resiliency in the infrastructure and mission for Department of Defense. Uh, additionally, we've, uh, Department of Defense has developed a climate change adaptation work group. Uh, another level, this is the, the action offers, officer level. It includes uh, representatives from all the services. Uh, multiple o uh, Office of Secretary of Defense offices uh, are involved. And that's, what we're do that's what's being managed. That's the structure that's looking at the, ro the roadmap, the plans on, on the steps that we'll be taking DOD-wide and ultimately uh, for each one of the services. Separately and independently, the, US, the Department of Navy, the U.S. Navy, has had a Navy Task Force Climate Change in place since, I believe, about 2009. This is an organization within our department that's looking across all the areas, our operations, our fleet uh, admirals and commands, our systems command, the folks that design and plan and build our ships, our Air Force, our Na Naval System Air Command, our facilities and infrastructure, our environment safety and, and operations uh, uh, organizations uh, meet regularly on this uh, U.S. Navy Task Force Climate Change of how are we planning, organizing, and implementing the, the changes that are necessary. Next major initiative that we're looking at is research. We need to have more information. We are out on the ocean and we recognize there's a lot that we don't know. Uh, two levels of research are being done. First at Department of Defense level, there is Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program. Many of you are aware, CERTIP has set up a number of specific factors to look at, uh, look at climate change. The defense uh, climate Change Adaptation Working Group has developed specific guidance, is working on guidance for how we do uh, facility-specific assessments that will be part of our, our research initiatives. Also, we're doing specific uh, vulnerability assessments at our, at our installation. Uh, at the DOD level, they're conducting what we call screening level assessments of all coastal and tidal installations worldwide. For the Department of Navy, the U.S. Navy is doing sea level rise vulnerability assessments. And this is particularly important to the Navy. We have, we've looked across, uh, across the world and the, and, the, and the Navy has 358 sites that specifically are looking at impact from, from sea level rise. The other services together have, uh, have fewer but also have uh, uh, over 300 uh, uh, sites worldwide. The Navy is looking at a tiered approach. We're looking one that will leverage results from the screening analysis. It's done by Department of Defense, but we're th what we've uh, uh, most recently been focusing on Hampton Roads, on uh, Naval uh, Station Norfolk, because it's the premier uh, naval port, and really it will re reflects the, the, all of the challenges that we'll ha have locally. There's been, a, there's been a vulnerability assessment done. It's kept on the CERTIP website, uh, and you can get information about what that shows and the pretty pictures. 
Um, finally, let me talk about the message because I'm, uh, I'm uh, running out of time very quickly. We're just at the beginning of, uh, of putting in place the, the, the structure to, to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> Even though I have stopped, I got the word that I'll, I'll, I'll go on, uh, but I'll wrap it up pretty quick. <laughs> Uh, we have, uh, there's many adaptation measures the Department of Navy, uh, Department of Defense has been using for years. We have had problems with typhoons, with hurricanes, and we've, uh, we've been strengthening our infrastructure, building resiliency at locations worldwide. It's not something that we're just starting now. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, techniques and been improving our, uh, our infrastructure right along. I mentioned the new policy that needs to be developed, but we're focusing, as I mentioned earlier, on how we can change our day-to-day, -day, how we do business to incorporate this look to the future. What's going what's to be the case 50 years from now, 100 years from now, when we're uh, making these investments in our, in our installations? From an installation perspective, what we need, and we've, we've uh, talked about this internally and begin to discuss this with our other federal partners, is we need a common set of government-wide, regional-specific uh, criteria and, f and uh, standards to plan towards. Why is this? Because, well, the Department of Navy in, in Norfolk is, are we going to build uh, three feet, five feet, one feet, ten feet? And if I do this for this building, is it going to be all my buildings? Is it going to be the other federal government buildings in the community? Is it going to be the community? Well, of course, it has to be all of them. We're part the Department of Navy uh, and Department of Defense recognize we're part of these communities. And so we need to, and the last uh, point is the key part, it needs to be a joint effort with our communities planning for the future. And we're pleased to say we're working very closely with the folks in, in Norfolk and many of our, our key areas to, to have the, the partnerships among the leaderships to uh, put together uh, first the need, the understanding, uh, the screening, and ultimately uh, an assessment and plan, f plan for the future. So uh, I'm very pleased to be here today and look forward to our, to our other speakers. Thank you.